Okay, so first order of business, go to the Anne Frank house today. That's the only thing we really have planned today, but we also might probably do a canal tour and Heineken tour. Yep. Yeah, so we'll see how those go. I'm not sure if I can film in the Anne Frank house or not, but if I can, I'll get some, but I kind of doubt it, but we'll see. So we just got out of the Anne Frank house, and of course, everywhere we go, everything we do, it's like, no, no cameras, no filming, no cameras allowed, yada, yada, yada. So I didn't get any pictures or any film of that, but it was the most amazing experience that I've ever, like, been able to do, I guess. Um, summer after eighth grade, I went to a Holocaust Museum in New York, and I don't think I was really, like, old enough to really appreciate that, but, like, being a lot older now and actually, like, knowing what happened and going, like and checking this out, it was a lot different and it was a great experience and if you're ever in Amsterdam, you should definitely do it. But right now we're just sitting chilling on the canal until we decide where to go eat because that's how we roll. But it's gorgeous out, it's always gorgeous here I feel like. The water is not exactly pretty but it's great scenery and all the old brick buildings, it's just really pretty. Yeah, we're gonna go find food. We made it to the Heineken tour, so this is the start of it. I guess this is where the barley went into. 20 meters silo? I don't know. Take a good look at the discount that I tell His name is Alfred Henry Heineken, or Freddy, as you like to be called. Charming, intelligent, extremely likable, and beloved in the Netherlands as well as the rest of the world. Old school brewing method, I guess. And there's the old school beer bottle. <laughs> That's so heavy. Evolutions of the Heineken logos. And the one we have now. Okay, so this is the first step of the beer making process. We're gonna we're gonna see how this goes. It tastes like dead Cheerios. <laughs> They're like cooked meat. It tastes like cooked meat. Corinne loves her horsies. <laughs> How many pictures do you need, honey? Oh, yeah. They are adorable. I'm not going to lie. The tasting is quite different, similar to wine tasting, uh, but we always said that beer tasting has a happy ending. Not a happy ending, you guys might have been thinking about, you can drink your beer here, you don't have to spit it out because we're not going to clean it and beer is much better than this. So <coughs> Alright guys, so the first stage is actually holding this beer in front of us and telling me what is the color of this Heineken beer? Anybody? Gold. 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 Golden, exactly. And where does this golden color come from? Do you guys know that by any chance? What ingredient? Barley. 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 Yeah, yeah. When you have a Guinness beer, for example, you get the very dark roasted barley. When we have a Heineken beer, we get the golden roasted barley. This golden color is very important to us because you can ask anybody, believe it or not, when you want a perfect beer, you get a Heineken beer. And to resemble this, you need a golden color to symbolize perfection. So, guys, another very significant feature of this Heineken beer is actually the white foam head on top of it. Why do you think Dutch people put so much foam head on top of their beer? It's not the fact that we like getting head, not in this case. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, why? Why do we have the foam head? You get less beer for your money. Exactly. Just across your mind. Cheap That's how they pass it. It's the fact that we are cheap, but not in this case. Hold it up to the light, guys. Have a look under it. What do you guys see? Right under the... Bubbles. Yeah, what is it? Foam head. Bubbles. Yeah, exactly. Bubbles. Guys, does anybody fancy drinking a Pepsi or a different kind of soda without the bubbles? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm 
Exactly. That's what the bubbles for. <laughs> to protect the beer. Guys, if you hold it up, you guys saw the bubbles. Those bubbles are the carbon dioxide bubbles. And the carbon dioxide keeps the beer fresh. So it acts like a cap. It prevents the carbon dioxide from leaving and oxygen entering. If oxygen does indeed enter the beer, it dies. It goes flat. It's disgusting. So to ensure the quality, we will always have two fingers of foam. Now this is going to be a lot less because these are much smaller glasses, but I have a little glass there. There should always be two fingers of foam. Now let's smell this foam head. Not too hard. Not everything that's white goes up your nose in Amsterdam. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, funny smell. What ingredient? If it's not going to be the bar, what ingredient is it? Hops. Hops, yeah. And do you remember that the hops create the bitterness? Yes. And do you, 90 percent of this foam is made out of hops and egg white. All right. Now, for the people that don't like beer, please raise your hand. There is no problem with that. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Why don't you like beer? Yeah? Please, really not please a fan. Let's demonstrate how you normally <coughs> your beer. I would suggest being great. Alright, now the difference is what a normal beer drink It's good that you showed me because, guys, if you look at that, most people that don't like beer, they tend to be most of the time women, and their main argument is always the taste. So I would ask them to demonstrate how they And it takes very small elegant sips. <laughs> <laughs> Not, but in case of drinking beer, don't. Why? Because the golden part is the beer, and that is the only part that is dark. Now, somebody made a pretty smart remark just now and said, well, the foam is on top, so how does it do I get past the foam to drink the golden part? Make sure, guys, that you have your beer at this angle to your mouth. You guys can all see this? My white foam, it stays intact on top, and my golden part is what I can drink. How do I make sure this happens? I make sure the glass comes to me, and I don't go to my glass. It looks retarded as well from standing in the bar like this. <laughs> <laughs> I want to stand tall and drink it. Right? So guys, I want you guys to try it. I want to see white mustaches on all of your faces. <laughs> Take a big sip of your beer. And you guys should really taste the sweetness of the barley at the tip of your tongue. And then it gradually becomes a bit bitter from the hops at the back here. Now to properly end this, guys, what is cheers in Dutch? Most. Most, exactly. So guys, on three, however, look at each other, guys. Otherwise, it's seven years of bad sex. <laughs> in there, I've done that, I'm doing it again, guys. So, one, two, three, bros. Please enjoy your beers, guys. If you guys have any questions, please ask me. Otherwise, my beer's finished, the torpedoes are there. I still have one beer left. Let me ask you, what is the guy's name in the movie? Hi, guys. My name is... Alan Mars. Yeah. See, it's like that. Here you go. Cheers. Alex. Yeah. Welcome to the Heineken Tap Challenge. Assume the correct Okay. Alright, whatever. That's fine. So the tour also included two free drinks, but since we know how well my House of Bulls experience went, I'm sticking with the Pepsi. This on our last night of Amsterdam. You'll drink that on your our last night. <laughs> Why are you can you stop? I just had a heart attack. Don't do that. I need to like <laughs> so we got done with the Heineken tour, obviously. We're back in the apartment. Um, after that, we went on a mission to get our free gift. I took us on the wrong tram, and then we ended up on the metro. It's not work at all. <laughs> and then, I don't, whatever. We figured it out and we're safe and that's always good 
and then we went and had dinner at a really good place and I got tiramisu, it's my favorite thing ever, which is weird because I don't like any of the ingredients that are in it separately. I don't understand it, but dinner was amazing. Our day is over. It's what, like nine o'clock right now? Look. It's yep, it's like nine o'clock right now. So we got a full day tomorrow and then we leave Friday morning for Paris. I'm sorry, I'm still so excited about Paris. I can't wait. 